Member statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my riding of Thornhill is filled with hard-working, innovative self-starters. I talked about them a bit on my maiden speech uh, yesterday. And on the topic of hard work, I want to pay special tribute to the many hard-working people of small businesses within Thornhill who came here with very little and created something from nothing. With that being said, I would like to show praise to a local business in our riding known as Yosef Makur Shabbos, owned by a man named Moish Wolfson, whose journey originates from Israel. He came to Canada not so long ago in hopes of a better life for himself and his family. This new takeout business offers a huge selection of fish and prepared food with more than 40 types of salads, dips, and meals that will help our busy families put food on the table. And I forgot to mention, Mr. Speaker, the food is completely kosher. Very delicious. The name of his storefront, Yosef Makor Shabbos, comes from Jewish folklore. The story presents itself with a poor man who buys a fish only to discover a diamond within that fish. He uses this to feed his family and provide for a future. This is exactly what Moish did, a newcomer in 2017 with little to nothing. Then he opened a takeout restaurant amid the pandemic, employed individuals, and serviced our community, leading him to open a second store just a few weeks ago, Mr. Speaker. He continues to be an inspiration not only for myself, but the rest of the innovative and hardworking community that resides in Thornhill. Just one Thornhill success story depicting solid determination and starting from something that was nothing and then growing into something more and then something more. I will continue to work hard for the people of my community, Mr. Speaker, cutting red tape for businesses and building for a stronger Thornhill and Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The next member statement, member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Oshawa has a very rich and awesome history when it comes to automotive. Since Sam McLaughlin dreamed of innovation in a vibrant motor city, Oshawa has been connected to the story of cars and innovation. We have stood in this legislature and talked about the future of electric vehicles and the next chapter in Ontario's automotive future. Speaker, summer is, all, is auto season where I live. When the weather gets good, the parking lots fill up with classic cars and show and shine events. And today I want to talk about the awesome classic cars and trucks and vehicles that celebrated together in Oshawa this past weekend. Oshawa was host to classic cars from far and wide. Friday was Cars on King downtown, and then on Saturday and Sunday, it was our famous Auto Fest. I'd like to congratulate and appreciate the City of Oshawa and organizers of Cars on King, which was a roaring success. Neighbors and car fans lined the streets, filled patios, and were almost as glad to see each other as the classic cars. I would also like to applaud the Motor City Car Club for a successful weekend of Auto Fest. There were more than a thousand cars that I, I estimate, that I counted, Speaker, down by the lake. It was a beautiful weekend to share, admire, reminisce, and appreciate a great event with more vehicle entries than we've seen in recent memories. AutoFest has been happening in Oshawa since 1994, and Speaker, if you and anyone else here missed it, everyone is invited next year. Thank you. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honored to recognize the successful inaugural season of our local Scarborough Shooting Stars, the eighth franchise within the Canadian Elite Basketball League. The Shooting Stars completed their debut season this summer, playing their home game at the Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre right here in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. I'm so proud that they made it to a nail-biting championship this year. They fought hard to the end, coming just short to the Hamilton Honey Badgers. We were proud to have celebrities such as Drake and J. Cole rooting on our team alongside the residents across Scarborough. The Shooting Stars are uniting residents across Scarborough to catch a game and to root on our local team. They are also inspiring youth across my riding to get involved in sport, focusing on amazing values of leadership, teamwork, and discipline. This is having a real contribution within our community and is certainly bringing positive energy into Scarborough. I'm looking forward to watching this team and their fan base behind it grow as we prepare for many seasons to come. I'm sure that championship for Shooting Stars is right around the corner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Member statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, what can you do with an empty lot? And a lot of people think nothing. But in Sudbury, the five cent city believes in making connections through, through community. So once a year, they take over a 40 by 80 parking lot and they bring the community together. From the outside, Speaker, it looks like a basketball event because they have free, free throw contests, they have three and three contests, they have slam dunk contests. But in between, they talk about mental health, they talk about addictions, they talk about struggle and support, they talk about lived experience, they provide free haircuts, they have pizza and snacks, music and fun, and that's what they can do with nothing. Can you imagine, Speaker, what we could do with mental health and addiction was properly funded across the province? Tomorrow's International Overdose Awareness Day, Northern Ontario remains the hardest hit. Thunder Bay District has the highest rate of overdose deaths in the province, more than four times the provincial average. Sudbury District has the second highest opioid death rate, and Northern Ontario's mortality rate has more than doubled, and we do not have enough help. Tomorrow is International Overdose Day, and I've heard the Minister of Health is going to be in Sudbury. I'm hopeful she's there to announce funding for Sudbury's supervised consumption site, and I'm hopeful that she continues to announce funding across the province, particularly in Northern Ontario, Speaker, because in the Five Cent City, we're tired of saying thanks for nothing. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, uh, Speaker. It's an honour to rise in the legislature today to share the great news of another important investment in Sarnia Lambton by this government of Ontario. Speaker, Sarnia Lambton's Lambton College has developed an international reputation as one of the best applied research post-secondary institutions anywhere in Canada. Last Friday, on behalf of the Ministry of Colleges and Universities, I had the honour of announcing that the Government of Ontario will be supporting another important research project at Lambton College by investing nearly $600,000 in the Lambton Water Centre Research Project at the College. Water is such a vital resource for everything we do in Ontario. As a province, we are blessed with access to an abundance of fresh water. And because of that, the Lambton Water Centre at Lambton College College has been leading research into how companies of all sizes can develop and improve, optimize and enhance our water-related technology. This large investment by the Government of Ontario and Lambton College will be used to support research operations, including equipping college facilities with the latest technology and supporting researchers to attract and retain the top research uh, talent. Speaker, this is great news from the Government of Ontario. By supporting groundbreaking research at Lambton College, our government is helping to advance new discoveries and innovation, foster new business and career opportunities in Lambton County. I might also add, Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity and the privilege uh, last Sunday, Sunday last, to introduce uh, uh, the Ministry of the Solicitor General, uh, Michael Kirzner, to the Lambton College Fire wow. School, another renowned uh, facility in Lambton uh, County as well. So thank you again, Mr. Speaker, for the time. Bob is the best. Member statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. This is my first member statement in the House, and I want to recognize that August, sorry, August 31st is International Overdose Awareness Day. People use drugs, and this has been true throughout all of human history, but drug use should never be a death sentence. But I'm worried that this government hasn't acted because those who use drugs are oftentimes and largely disproportionately black, indigenous, racialized trans sex workers, people living with mental illness and or disabilities. Speakers, drug users' lives do matter. Overdoses don't exclusively happen to other people's families. If stigma has not already taken the life of someone you know, mark my word, it will soon. We know the solutions to preventing overdose deaths include decriminalizing drugs, making drugs supply uh, available and freely, and guarantee a free supply with available testing. Funding of affordable and supportive housing and supportive beds for those seeking treatments. As I close my remarks, I especially want to acknowledge the workers and organizations leading change on the front lines, especially those in Toronto Centre and beyond. There are too many to name in the time that I have, but to those on the front line, you have all been to too many funerals. And when things finally change, and they will, it will be because of the difficult and life-transforming work you are doing today. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. This past Saturday, I met with members of the Brant Curling Club to celebrate two grants from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, totaling just under $549,000 at their first annual fundraising golf tournament dinner. These grants were used to install new refrigeration equipment and insulate and clad the exterior of the ice shed. 
that will not only extend the life of the facility, but also save thousands of dollars in energy costs annually and also to help them remain viable and recover during the pandemic. Pre-Confederation Scottish newcomers wanted to help alleviate the long Ontario winters with some kind of sporting activity and wondered if curling might be the way to do so. Well, they were right, Speaker. The Brand Curling Club is used by a variety of community organizations for meetings, for celebrations, team-building events, and fundraisers. At one level, there appears to be little in common between the curling that came to Upper Canada in 1759 and today's game. Then it was irons. Now it's granite. Then it was outdoors on natural ice. Now it is indoors on artificial ice. But one thing remains is the warmth and camaraderie that still exists, embodied in the Brant Curling Club's tagline, where friends meet. I would like to give a big thanks to the Ontario Trillium Foundation. These grants will allow the Brant Curling Club to purchase state-of-the-art ice-making equipment, improve the appearance of the building, accommodate gatherings, and serve our community better while maintaining their viability during the pandemic. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Beaches East York. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I am always proud to rise in this beautiful chamber to speak about Beaches East York. I recently attended a picnic organized by Pegasus Community Project. After a two-year hiatus, it was a great chance to reconnect. For those who don't know this organization, Pegasus is a grassroots group founded in 1994 by, by Marie Parada, along with a small group of women to help adults with developmental disabilities who were finishing school and had few options for continuing to learn and to adapt in adult roles in their community. Along with its daily programs, Pegasus boasts its annual inspirational film festival, a yearly fashion show, and the Pegasus shop a social enterprise community thrift shop with proceeds that directly support the Pegasus project and employ present Pegasus participants. Mr. Speaker, it's an incredible space. Pegasus is evolving to meet the needs of aging participants experiencing difficult challenges. Opportunities to expand programming depend on funding from every level of government, as well as private sponsorship. Unfortunately, two of the organization's beloved members passed away earlier this year, and a memorial fund for Gavin Moore Burns has been set up specifically to fund programs for aging participants. One of my critic roles is that of seniors and accessibility, with the goal of helping both seniors and people with disabilities stay independent, active, and socially connected. Support must include all members of our population. Mr. Speaker, we've seen critical cuts to health care, a decline in autism services, mental health supports diminish, and support for important organizations like Pegasus become a rare find. We have an obligation to make sure that they and others are able to survive and thrive. Number four, Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, on the 31st Independence Day of Ukraine, I was honoured to join the Premier and the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport and the Ukrainian Ambassador, Yulia Kovalev, at the Lighthouse Art Space in Toronto for a special preview of the incredible new exhibit the U titled Ukraine, Land of the Brave, which will soon open as part of the Bloor West Village Ukrainian Festival from September 15th to the 18th. I want to encourage all members to visit. Proceeds will support the purchase of medical and evacuation vehicles in Ukraine. I want to thank the Mississauga companies like Muscat Transport and Cyclone Manufacturing that have worked together to send humanitarian aid to Ukraine. I also want to thank Ontarians, including many in my own community, who have welcomed Ukrainian refugees into their homes and into their communities, over 25,000 in the last six months. While I can't name all of them here, I do want to thank the Sheridan Park Family Church for helping to collect donations of food, clothing, and other supplies for refugee families now staying in local hotels. They will join a vibrant Ukrainian-Canadian community in Mississauga that has an incredible positive impact on Ontario. From athletes like the Toronto Maple Leafs legend Johnny Bauer and to entrepreneurs like Igor Antonov, a longtime resident of Poor Credit, Ontarians will always welcome refugees and our government will always ensure they have an access to resources and services they need. Once again, 
Happy Independence Day. Slava Ukraine. Member statements. Member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It gives me great pleasure, Mr. Speaker, to recognize a significant anniversary coming up in two weeks for one of Canada's oldest and storied regiments in the Canadian Armed Forces. Durham Region's own Ontario Regiment will celebrate its 156th anniversary on September the 14th, 2022, making Oshawa's regiment among the oldest continuously serving reserve militia units in Canada and one of the most senior armoured regiments in the Royal Canadian, Royal Canadian Armoured Corps. Having first originated in 1866 in Whitby, Ontario, as the 34th Ontario Battalion of Infantry, then redesigned as the Ontario Regiment in 1900, the Ontars, or Black Cats, have heroically served Canadians and citizens of the world through various military campaigns. The unit fought with distinction in several theatres during World War II, beginning with the Allied invasion of Sicily in July 1943, through to the Italian campaign of the war seeing action in the fierce Leary Valley and on to Ortana. Most notably, in 1945, the unit entered the Northwest European Theatre, where it fought with distinction in the Dutch campaign, winning honours at Arnhem. Along with many battle honours, a significant number of the regiment's soldiers have volunteered for active duty with NATO in Germany, United Nations missions in Cyprus and Bosnia, the Golan Heights, Cambodia, the former Yugoslavia, and most recently the NATO-led engagement in Afghanistan. I'm proud to offer congratulations to the unit's Honorary Colonel Robert Chapman, Honorary Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Shaw, incoming Commander Officer of the Antars, Lieutenant Colonel Christian Karen, the officers and soldiers, faithful and prepared, Fidelis a Paratus. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.